Good day, listeners, viewers, those of us joining us by YouTube, radio, television, or one of the major distribution channels. I am your host, Phil Henderson, here with another exciting and informative episode of Talking to Vet. I have a very interesting guest here with us today who's going to give us some of her challenges, some of her success stories, and some of the things that she's looking forward to in the Tibet Transformation Project. St. Lucia has taken a bold step in transforming four secondary schools into fully focused Tibet institutions, and we are here to delve into that subject matter to bring some information to you. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce my guest, Dr. Marjorie Jameson Charles. Thank you for joining me. Dr. Do I say Dr. Jameson Charles? Do I say Dr. Marjorie Jameson Charles? Do I say Dr. Charles? Jameson Charles. Jameson Charles. All right. Thank you. So this is my first time meeting you. Yeah. Very excited to meet you. Thank you. Um, those who have the team who has helped prepare uh, us for this episode have said nothing but good things about you yeah. and that even in your professional capacity, which we'll get into in a little while, you have remained an advocate for the Tevet project mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll find out, you know, what value you see in that. So I'm looking at your bio um, and it says you are, pro you are a prominent educator from St. Lucia, recently appointed as principal of the South Lewis Community College. So I'm sure some of your faculty members and students would be happy to see you here in a different platform wearing a different hat. Mm -hmm. um, you have extensive academic background, an extensive academic background, holding a bachelor's degree of science in psychology from UWE, master's degree in education, in education for employment from the University of Sheffield, and a PhD in education, learning and instruction in higher education from the University of Otago. Am I saying that correctly? In New Zealand. Mm -hmm. You are also a certified hospitality department trainer from Education International, American Hotel and Lodging. Mm -hmm. So a bit of a shift. Did you do that before or after? I did that so during the time I was doing my master's in education for employment. Okay. Okay. Um, you served at UWE, St. Augustine's mm -hmm. campus for over a decade in various capacities, including lecturer mm -hmm. and a coordinator for several education programs. So I think that I'm happy to hear that you have such a rich and expensive <laughs> <laughs> background mm -hmm. in education mm -hmm. so that when you speak, you don't just say things based on your personal views, but it comes with an informed perspective. Uh, on a theoretical lens. So and so it adds credibility to what you are going to say, and I know you have some things to say. Um, so, Dr. Jameson Charles, just share with me briefly a little bit about your history, your professional history that wasn't mentioned here, and highlight one or two other key milestones for me, please. Okay, good. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for having me. As I always, people ask me, I didn't choose teaching. Teaching chose, chose you. Me. I didn't want to teach at all. Mm -hmm. I wanted. I was excited about working. You know, as growing up, working on the Cunard, doing hospitality things and mm -hmm. stuff. And my parents didn't you know I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I saw this sword, and they told me do something safe like nursing or teaching. I said, Nah, I want to do either of this. I need to go on the sea or on the land or, or in the sky. And then they said, No, stay grounded. So in on the first of March, nineteen eighty. I got a call from one of the nuns at Ave Maria Primary uh, School to hold on for somebody for three months. And I said to my mommy, I don't want to teach. She said, only three months, go. So still three months, <laughs> 1980. <laughs> so I taught at Ave Maria Primary School from 1980 to 1995. I taught standard two and I taught common entrance for a number of years. And this was very, very these are what made me who I am as a teacher. And I left, I went to, to do my first degree. I did a degree in psychology. Mm. And when I returned, I came back, I went to work at the Entry Post Secondary School um, as a school guidance counselor. I was a guidance counselor there from 98 to 2006. So there I prepared the students for 
careers, help, help them deal with all of the issues that they had. I taught mathematics. But what kept you in teaching? It, three months turned to, I, I say how many I years. I how many but... times I tried to leave teaching. What it, kept you there? I, I like, I like students. Mm -hmm. I like the people. You know, and I think that was my calling because I, I try to leave how many times and I and I never get to leave. And you are currently the principal. And right now I'm, I'm the principal. Of which that. is a big hat to wear. It's and you have a very lovely hat that matches our outfits. So yeah, we coordinated, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> are we using the green for the TV? Yes, TV the, the, the V and TV. Is right. So, yeah, we, so we're representing the brand. So we're representing yeah. the brand very well. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so that, that kept you in teaching those initial three months and then many challenges and miles. Yeah, milestones, yes. And then I went to New Zealand. I went to do my PhD and then I mm. also taught. Mm. I taught at the University of um, Otago. I taught, mm. um, and I also volunteered as a counselor mm. for student support. And then there was this big project going on, assessment. They were doing an assessment of um, education, a, a big assessment project going on for New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And I was part of the assessment team where I trained the teachers in assessment, authentic assessment, not just writing things, but we developed assessment tools and everything authentic for students in grade five and grade seven. Is that project, that assessment project, what sparked your interest in TVET? No, I always wanted to do TVET. I always wanted to, when I left St. Joseph's Convent in 79, mm -hmm. I wanted to go to uh, Montec. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go and do hospitality. And my, my mother said no. So then when I became an adult, I did my hospitality. Mm -hmm. And no, that's what my master's degree was. I looked at um, the hospitality department. I, that's, what was my st that's what I studied. Uh, my thesis was on... Um, are we being served? Mm -hmm. what, uh, the, what's happening at the South Police Community College Hospitality Department is what is the reality for the workforce. And I have done a lot of work also on industry, how industry, um, the importance of in involving industry in the development of curriculum. I've done a lot of writing on it, and, and uh, I've written about two or three papers on Tibet and how it is that we should be able to do Tibet well. So when I went to St. Augustine, uh, in 2009, I went to St. Augustine, I went to, I went there as a, as, a, as a lecturer, I taught statistics, qualitative research methods. And then the opportunity arose for us to, we started our first Masters of Arts in Tibet and Workforce Development. And they knowing that I had a background in technical vocational education there from a hospitality department standpoint, because when I did my master's, I also worked, not really work, I volunteered at Sandals House and on the weekend, I, I, I learned the, uh, the entire um, operations of hospitality. So then when I got into, into UWI St. Augustine and they were starting that program, I was recruited to be part of that program. And then afterwards, maybe a year later, I was, I was asked to coordinate the Masters of Arts in Tibet and workforce development. And during that time, there was a European Union project for Belize to, um, to develop the capacity of Tibet instructors in Belize. Mm -hmm. So then I prepared and I worked on um, two programs for the Belize, pro for Belize uh, with, um, via St. Augustine. We look at um, a certificate in leadership for Tibet instructors mm -hmm. and Tibet leaders and also a postgraduate diploma for in, for in competency-based education for Tibet instructors. And then I've been moving, I've been working with Tibet for, or, uh, as a Tibet person, as a Tibet in higher education. I've been teaching, working with Tibet teachers from since 2010. Okay. Right. That's quite a colorful history. Um, I'd want to ask you a little bit more about how you are now marrying Tibet with the role that you serve in SAF and how you're integrating Tibet into that school. Not that what you had done before was not significant, but what it led you to. I think everything that you went through put you here for this and how you are impacting students at such a critical, I mean, every, every education level is critical, but that cusp of, of, of energy and age level is they're not yet adults but they are pre-adults 
and this really sets the foundation for the rest of their life if they had not made up their mind as to what trajectory do they take later on. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the CVQ, which is the certification offered by um, the Tibet Focus Institutions? Um, is it recognized at the South and West Community College? Okay, um, let us just talk CVQ first before talking about the recognition mm -hmm. at the Lewis Community College. CVQ has been there for a while, but it has not been embraced. Because I don't, one of the things I think about when I, when I talk CVQ is that mm -hmm. we have not adequately um, educated our people mm -hmm. as to what the CVQ is and how CVQ is going to enhance the learning of our students. What has happened in, in, in the past since I started, uh, we start talking CVQ is that people think that CVQ, that if I am at, uh, at a particular secondary school, I shouldn't do CVQ. Mm -hmm. a CVQ is a Caribbean vocational qualification. This is a qualification that, enhan that enables students to be able to work in industry or in a particular job, in a particular occupation. So mm -hmm. we look, so it is based on occupational standards. Now we as Caribbean people, cancer has, we have developed these standards based on a job. Mm -hmm. And from that job, this job, we have, we have developed the tasks. For example, you as a, um, um, a journalist, we as, if we have to develop a CBQ for journalism, we have to find out what are the tasks. That are, that are associated with your, your particular job, mm. and then we develop into subtasks, and then we de and then we find out exactly what is needed for us to develop for us to develop that particular standards. Because what is we doing? The CVQs are standards that are available or that are accepted throughout the Caribbean. So if I have a CVQ in building construction or whatever, and I take this level one or level two or level three, each level has a different um. Uh, the, uh, is is different and so so for level one would be for entry level people mm -hmm. level two people who are not just really entry level but they can work on their own and level three super supervisory level it goes up to a number of, of levels up to um each level represent something from more advanced from more advanced yeah. so level four is at the bachelor's level all right mostly be be um level four cbq would be equivalent to bachelor's level, right? And, and as it progress. So people have to understand what the CBQ is first. So what about this thing about one CSEC being compared to one CBQ? No, How cannot, does that work? We cannot compare a CSEC for CBQ. These are two different beasts, two, two different entities. You're doing maths as a CSEC. But a CBQ, as I said to you, is an amalgamation of different um, let's see if units, different um, subject areas, and so on. So let us say I'm doing a, a, a CVQ in um, crop production. I'm not doing just crop production. Mm -hmm. There are a number of units that they have to do because it is competency-based. So they would be doing the maths, they would be doing the, the life skills, they would be doing the employability skills, and all of these different things, which we talk it from a... And when I talk up from a competency-based standpoint, I'm talking about the knowledge, the skills, and the attitude. And one of the things that we as, not just St. Lucia, who say, okay, he's not academically inclined, so let us let him do a CVQ. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest mistake, or the biggest error that we could ever make in education. What does it mean to be not academically inclined? That is the question I usually ask people when they say that to me. Because everybody, can work, but everybody work at a different pace or different time because we have some late bloomers. They may not be able to grasp the maths and the English in, uh, at a particular time. They may have issues. They may have learning disabilities. They may have um, issues at psychological issues, issues at home that prevents them from learning. From an educational psychology standpoint, the conditions of the learning environment is what determines how students learn. So some of my students, I have I've been teaching for since I'm in education for 44 years. Some of my students who I've seen, I saw who have been late, who have not been able, who were not doing what the maths and the English and stuff, 
Now I'm seeing them, they have grown and they have, because they were developers. So sometimes we box our students because, okay, you go and learn a trade or you go and learn this and that and the other. But TVET is knowledge in action. So if you do not know the knowledge, if you don't have the, the, the knowledge, you cannot, do, you cannot be able, you will not be able to transfer the knowledge into the skill. All right? So we need to debunk mm -hmm. that myth mm -hmm. that the non-academically inclined people go to Tibet. That is wrong. Tibet needs higher order level thinking. Because for, re for me to be able to move from um, the knowledge to the skill, I need to understand what is happening with that put it for me to be able to transfer the knowledge into the skill. And then I need to have that attitude to be able to be competent. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure you've heard people say, this is a good doctor, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or this is a good lawyer, but. So he has the knowledge, he has the skill, but he doesn't have yeah. missing something. Yeah. Because you mentioned so the not knowledge, skills, and an attitude. attitude. So yeah. therefore he's not yet competent. He may have the knowledge, he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant mechanic. Something is missing to make him competent. It's the three-pronged approach. Now, so talking now, let us go back to the question you asked me about the CVQ at South Philippines Community College. We are now working on, 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 on how we are going to do that because we know how important it is for us to, we have what they call prior learning, PLAR, where, we, where you have prior learning. Some people may come in, they may have um, the skills and they may have experience working in a particular area. So we have to find out what is happening, where they are at and so on, what are the experiences that they have and what are the gaps mm -hmm. for us to be able to look at it. But right now, as I have returned, as I'm at South Lewis Community College, we know that we level one and level two we will not it would be done in the secondary school, NSDC and K. So we're working towards level three. At, at, South at South South South. level three and above. So what we're looking at is how do we get the people who have completed level two, a seamless transition from level two to level three at Sir Lewis. We are still talking about it. It has not. It, so it is still a theory. But bec because one of the things for you to be able to have a CBQ and stuff like that, it, it is very, very resource dependent. It's, mm -hmm. it's very expensive. And uh, also, the institution who is supposed to um, do the t the CBQ must be assessed to make sure that they're ready and outfitted with the right equipment. The equipment and, and not so just the equipment, the curriculum, personal everything. training, yeah. retooling. Everything, and everything. So but tell me a little bit about um the admissions part of it. How does the author acknowledge students based on where they are at a CSEC level or if they have CSEC and CVQs or CVQs or how how does that work okay. moving from that level into South. Now we have not been looking at the CVQs yet. Eh? As I said to you, we just, it's just, you, it's, it's yes. new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a new thing. How many, I don't know how many people have er, ev, have any CVQs from the secondary school to mm -hmm. move in to. And as I said, we're looking at level two to level three. Mm -hmm. But the matriculation that has be, we have, that is what we have still. Or oh, there are sometimes we have, we, we may have students, we have a special um, one year program for students who may not matriculate. They may be missing one or two subjects, so they come in and they do the they do that year and they complete. So what they call a kickstart project. Mm -hmm. So that because they may be needing a particular subject to be able to get in, so we have that kickstart project to help them. But from a CBQ standpoint, we still it's still on the drawing board. Okay, that's all I could say for now. I don't want to say anything more because it is not written properly yet. Okay, but we, but it is, but we are, we are, in, we are discussing it. How are we going to do it? Okay, because we do TVET at Sapa Lewis. As a, as a matter of fact, everything is TV, is uh, revolves around TVET. Medicine, as a doctor, that's technical vocational edu um, subject to be a doctor, uh, to be a surgeon. You have, you have to have the knowledge and the skills and the attitude. So yeah. we have four secondary schools that will be fully institutions of Tibet, right? And with that, they will be graduating mm -hmm. in four years. Also, some students have entered in the Form 3 level, mm -hmm. so they will be done in about two years. Can you speak to 
the preparedness or what are we doing to be prepared to accept those students to higher learning and um, integrating them into the other aspects of society yeah. at that point? Good. That's a good question. Um, the four schools that this is a very good initiative for bringing, having, bringing TVIT to schools and making sure that we have students who would be able to enter the industry or even into higher education from if they graduate, if they wish to enter at the Lewis Community College or any other institution that they feel that they, that they want to enter. Now, given it is the, 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 the newness and the trans and of, of it, and a lot of people are apprehensive about mm -hmm. what's going to happen to my child if my child goes to this poor school where they're not going to get into so after, or they're not going to get into university and stuff like that. TVET is the way the world is going. So whatever they, especially the CVQ, CVQ is a Caribbean vocational qualification where it is accepted in all of the CARICOM countries. So our students can, may not be able, may, could leave St. Lucia with a CVQ and work anywhere in the Caribbean. This is one of the things that we need to let our people know, our parents know, that with a CVQ, it is what they call, it, it is transportable, it has currency. It, no, it doesn't just have currency because they want to move from one from one country to the other mm. because it, because of the way it is standardized. At a, a level one CBQ in St. Lucia is equivalent to a level one CBQ in Trinidad, in Barbados, in Guyana. A level two CBQ in St. Lucia is equivalent to that in anywhere of the, in any of the CARICOM, CARICOM countries. And we so one of the things I need to say to parents and to teachers and to other educators that having the, the four schools who they are going to be doing the CVQ level one and two. So if you have a CVQ level one and then level two, and we are and we, and we at the at after Lewis Community College, we are a community college. We deal with our community, we deal with our students in our community. There are students who, that's the only tertiary education institution that they can afford to enter. So if a student leaves one of the four secondary schools who would we are trans we are transit that we're going to the further transition into mm. TVET institution. I don't see any reason why we at the after Lewis Community College will not accommodate them. Right? We will accommodate them. So strange. all we have to oh, do we welcome. have to do is to look at what is happening there, what what is happening at the school. We have to work with the schools also so that will, they will know what is expected and what they have to do. Now, I am TVET. I always say that to the, the people at the... Everybody knows I'm TVET. Who knows me? So, given that I am TVET, and given my passion for technical vocational education, because I know where TVET can bring you, I am, I am prepared. I have I started to work with the unit even long before I came to, to um, no, St. No. Lucia. I was working with the Tibet unit on helping them with the transition of the four schools. So I wouldn't just come and drop them, drop the ladder, for the ladder, but continue to assist them for us to see how best we can get our students to that place. So at the end, when they leave Form 5, if they see VQ, how they could be accommodated to Afro. This is not, this is not rocket science. I just have to put, I have to put the team together of, 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 of the registrar, academic board and stuff. Mm -hmm. And discuss what it is, but I'm sure that our student, our students will be accommodated because access is important. Access to educational opportunity that's very important to me. That's dear to my heart, and I'm I know that students, some some of the students would love to come up there because we have a number of programs that will, that will be aligned to what they are doing. We have agriculture, we have the hospitality, we have en engineering, and we have one of these things that they can do, all right? So if we cannot penalize them because of the, they, they, we say they're going to a, to a technical vocational education, I would like a lot of parents to send their students to these schools. It not just helps them from an academic standpoint, it helps them from a holistic standpoint. Because what they would get is not just the knowledge. They would be able to apply that knowledge, knowledge in action, 
and also the attitude would come in. Mm -hmm. So when we finish, when we leave, when the students leave that these institution, they are competent because they are the institution, these four institutions are coming from a competency-based standpoint. And I know that because the teachers there are being trained in competency-based education. Let and me. also we have also all have some assessors trained in Tibet assessors. So therefore, I have no reservations mm -hmm. in terms of what is happening as long as the process is followed. Okay. Let me, um, two things I, I want to, that you mentioned that stood out to me. Um, I'll adjust the first one and then move to the mm -hmm. last thing that you just mentioned in terms of the teachers and their adjustments. You mentioned the, there's apprehension. There is some apprehension amongst the society towards this project, not this project specifically, but um, integrating Tibet into schools. What would you say are some of the common challenges that you have had? Um, maybe not even just in your current role, just being involved in this project and the advocacy of it. Okay, one of the things is, one of the challenges that we have as a nation, it's not just us, because I, when I work in Trinidad, I was hearing that. The Tibet does not have the place that it deserves. Mm. in our society. We still have that mindset that if a child cannot learn, send him to do a trade. Mm. Send him to do this. Send them to the, make, to the little mechanic shop or the roadside mechanic to do a trade because he cannot learn. All right? Now this, this thing has been, I think it, it goes right back to um, colonial days. If you, if the Moen Commission report, the Moen Commission report, that was written a long time ago in terms of, after, you remember post-emancipation and stuff, and we had a number of people who didn't, they did not know what to do, so then they, they sent some people from the UK as novel to write up about what we need in, in, the, in, the, in the colonies, mm. and that the Moen Commission report came out of that. And one of the things that is, we spoke to in that report was that um, the, the children who were delinquent and who did not have the aptitude at the grammar school uh, um, to go to grammar school need to be apprentices and need to be in, in, in the trades. So from that standpoint, we as um, a Caribbean people, as St. Lucians, we spoke about, you know, a child, Tetley Wed, Voila, Voila Freddy. To learn to do um, mechanics and so on and so forth. So our little tetweds went into what they call the trade and what people conceptualize as TV. So when you had when people had TV, they don't want their children involved in TV because tetish mapawed. Why why am I sending my child there? Mm. So I am sending my child to a place where they're going to do the law, the the law and the medicine and the engineering and all mm. of these things, which are, in fact, Tibet. Because Tibet needs higher order level thinking, all right? Because we cannot change from um, knowledge to skills without being able to understand. I remember when I was at, at St. Joseph's Convent and I did cookery, I had a book called The How and Why of Cookery. You needed to understand the chemistry, mm -hmm. the food chemistry, for it to be able to do food, nutri food and nutrition. So why would I send a little tetweed? Mm -hmm to do ever then when they need to know the science of food and cooking, all right? So I want to, uh, to tell parents and the public that Tibet is the way to go. That is the way to transform our economy, to uh, transform our society, because we have students or people who are skilled in a particular occupation and so on, where they can make a meaningful contribution to society. We have a lot of lawyers who wish they could do TV. We have a lot of other people who wish that they could do TV. And as I always say to my to my teachers and my TV teachers, TV is life. I remember a young surgeon, a doctor. He came to do TV. He came to my TV class to learn. And one of the things he said to me was that. We asked him, how come he's such a good surgeon? He said he learned to crochet. His grandmother taught him how to crochet. Mm -hmm. And the skill mm -hmm. that he used to crochet was the skill he was able to transfer it 
into his practice. So he's a fantastic surgeon because he can crochet. I learned to crochet. That's a skill, you know? And people don't, understand, don't do that because we, are, we have that head space where if my child had gone to law and, and medicine and thing, my child had do nothing because I have to boast that my child is a lawyer or my child is a doctor. I want to boast that my child is a plumber. But the plumber makes more money than the doctor. The plumber makes more money than the lawyer. You know how hard it is to find a good plumber it, and not, a consistent one? Let me tell you, for, for, if, for a plumber to come to your house, you have to do, they come and they, make, and, they look at it, and they look at something and, they pay, mm -hmm. and you pay them a consultancy fee. And then they give you the, the how, they give you a list of things that they need, mm -hmm. and then you will have to pay them per hour. And this is important, and not just the plumber. Every and we have a shortage of these people because we 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 say that you know my child I want to do and do that. That is where. That is what we need. We need our people when we need to remember. We remember that they're not pet wins. Because when they come up to Southern Lewis Community College to do these things, they have to do the maths, mm -hmm. they have to do the science, they have to do the English, they have to do the physics and all of these kind of things. Because we cannot compartmentalize STEM and say this is STEM and this is TVET. There is a, what they call a symbiotic relationship between, between STEM the and TVET. Because you need to understand the science of whatever you're doing. I work. I spent some time in uh, in Germany, look um, at in in at the Chamber of Commerce. Each of the the, the little co counties in Germany, they have their Chamber of Commerce, and they have the dual system, and the dual system is is working fantastic. But it has been working some it's about a hundred years old and stuff like that. Where TVET is it? People send their students to work in. They go into the into to do the, the knowledge, the content areas part, and then they work in, in industry. And the industry identify who they take. And then they, so let's, let's say Audi or BMW. Yeah. Okay, they want 10 people. These 10 young people are sponsored by BMW. And the place where I, the, the dual system where I, where I, I spent about two or three months in, they, the BMW will, they will then give the, the college a car. That is the car I want my the students to work on. So they learn the theory, how the BMW works and whatever, whatever, the electronics part, the, the computer parts and stuff. So to two days they're in, in school and the next three days they on they go into the into the factory to work. Mm -hmm. All right? That's TV. We have vehicles now, we don't have a trend to do auto mechanics because that is Gris, gris. gris, that's monkey. gris. That's a gris monkey again. I could give you an example. I, I have a when I was in Trinidad, I had what the, I had a, a, ty, a Toyota Hilux and, a, and the power steering went bad. So I called the mechanic. I say, huh, I have I need some power steering fluid. The guy said power steering fluid. You just need a battery. I said I mean I mean I need a battery. He say we don't use power steering fluid and that again. Huh? It's a battery you need. Go change your battery. I have to buy a new battery. When I change the battery, everything was okay. So now, now we can't take our children, our cars, our brand new hybrid cars and bring it by the mm. roadside mechanic. Mm. The students have to be able to do that, to learn the science, the computer technology in, 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 in terms of the cars, in terms of what is happening. Because right now, all of our things, electronic, you know. You could stay here and use your cell phone and start your washing machine. Okay, you could do everything from there. So who's going to do that? Okay, right now we have um, um, lecturers. Go, uh, we have lecturers who are going to learn how in, in, they have been to Taiwan, they have been to Korea in terms of working on electronic vehicles. If you realize we have, we, we, uh, uh, we, what, we had a project at Sir Arthur Lewis where we transform a, a vehicle to an electric vehicle. I heard about that. Yeah, and it's yeah. fantastic. And the students are enjoying it. It still works? It's, of course it's working. It, every, we take everybody for rides on it. If you want to do it, you must come and get a ride. I will do that. Okay. I'll take you up on it. Yeah, but this is TBET. Engineering, this is TBET. You mentioned, um, earlier you mentioned your facilitators. Right, and I wanted to I wanted you to expand on that point for me. 
um, what adjustments would a teacher with a traditional background need to make to be able to come and teach a CVQ subject or CVQ discipline or become a CVQ facilitator? Training, first of all. What kind of training? We have to train them in competency-based education and training. And you do that at all? We do that here. We do that here. We, um, we have trained, how many people we have trained? About 100 teachers now in competency-based education and training. We have trained assessors. CVQ mm. assessors. What is is that like a year long program? Is it that, uh, depends. If we if you're already a teacher in in school, mm. uh, and you're a CVET and you're t a TVET teacher, we t we do um uh, maybe a six months in terms of putting you we putting you up to speed with the changes because education is dynamic, and you cannot whatever you taught last year or year before would have changed, especially from an occupational standpoint. Mm. So Occupations change. A look at AI. You see, we, well, two years or three years ago, did we have AI? I mean, we had it, but it is not as yeah. what it is today. Yeah. That's just a short, short period it's of a time. A short period of time. Look at the cars. Look at the, how the hybrid cars is, are coming. Yes. Yeah. All right? And then even hy if you look at hybrid, hybrid is not even the most forefront in the electronic, no. um, com um, electronic engines. Mm -hmm. You have full electronic engines. So hybrid full is the middle ground. Well, and I, we are now starting to get into hybrid, and the yeah. world is already and up, fully electric. Yeah, even my, as I was saying, uh, uh, my AC was wo now working in my in my vehicle now mm. in China. The guy just came with a computer, tick 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 tick, and fix it. Nothing else. That is the world that we are. And that is into. the world we are moving yeah. into. And that is the, that is that way. That is what Tibet is where Tibet is moving into. And I am happy about the four schools because I know that aspect will be center point at the preschools because I have seen what the schools are, are doing and I know for sure we are moving in that direction to modernize TVET and to make sure that whatever it is happening internationally will be happening in the four schools. That is why we are the teachers are being trained and the leaders will be trained in terms of how to lead a TVET institution. Dr. Charles, as we wrap up, I'm just thinking of the extensive history that you have had with Tivet as an educator, as a proponent for this project. Um, and I must ask, what would the Dr. Charles of today, the Dr. Jameson Charles of today, say to her younger self? Uh, I'll tell say my say a lot of things to my younger self, eh? But from a <laughs> but from a Tibet standpoint, and mm. working in the when I started as a in the, at the primary school, mm. I would say to myself, integrate Tibet into your work into the your, into primary school, mm. so that the, uh, the students will get an appreciation of the the knowledge and, and of, of skills of the trades, so that when they move up into wherever they are, they have something that they like. I'm looking and I'm seeing young entrepreneurs at at, at primary edu at primary level. I, I, I saw the news and I was and I was so heartened. It warmed my heart to see that the young children at the primary school have started integrating Tibet. And I want to say to my to I would say to my younger self, this is what I would have wanted to do: integrate it into your space, so that at the end of the day, ch the student would have something to say. Yeah. Now, we went for the introspection. Mm. Now I, I'm going to ask a similar question, but let's face it outwards. Mm. What would you say to the educators and the policymakers striving to enhance the Tibet program and perhaps even to the naysayers of the Tibet Transformation Project and Tibet as a whole? As I said, Tibet is life. And we were, we are living in a very dynamic world not just the workforce is dynamic it's ever changing and every and every day you see something new and stuff so the policy makers i want to say to you you need to i need to embrace tibet not just at a superficial level because many times i listen to people speak tibet and we and i am saddened because doesn't come from here. It doesn't come from the heart. It comes from the head. 
And TV coming from the head is like doing nothing. So what I want to say to the policymakers is to be serious about it. Be serious about TV. Because at the end of the day, when all the dust, the dust settles, that is what we're going to have. Because what we need, that is life. This is our lifeblood. As a small island developing state, we need to ensure that our people, our children are equipped with the knowledge and the skills and the attitude, attitude. Yes. to make, uh, to become, to make a meaningful contribution to the economic development of our society. Because I, I, I'm hearing, you know, do Tibet and, t and so on, and Kote Si, Kote La, but what we want to say to, the, to our policymakers, our parents, our educators, mm -hmm. take Tibet seriously. It is our lifeline. It is our lifeblood. And we need to do it. And we need to do it well. Not on the side or anything. Kote oh, Siko La, Apagal. You know, we do it well. And I want to endorse the initiative um, of the Tibet unit and the Ministry of Education in transforming the four Tibet schools. And they know they have my blessing and they have my help whenever they need me. Thank you very much <laughs> for that, Dr. Jameson Charles. You were incredible. You provided such a, a wonderful history about the project and your involvement. And your endorsement also goes a long way because um, like we are seeing, of course, if anything, I'm not saying that we should not embrace the oppositions to any project mm -hmm. but i think with greater education with greater advocacy of this project it would enlighten people to understand how beneficial this is and how integrated it already has been in, yep. in society and with advancing the qualifications giving our students that way that path i'm not even going to call it an alternative no, it's i'm just going to yeah. give it a, a another it's a parallel path that one can use to find themselves to the profession of their choice. Yeah, and I also want to endorse the CVQ as I'm there. It is, that's currency, transportability. So I have a CVQ in St. Lucia now, and they're looking for, they're going to build a hotel somewhere and they need people in, in building construction. I have a CVQ. I could go to wherever. In the Caribbean. In the Caribbean with that and get the job. Yeah, that's, that's, that's currency. That's real and currency. That's currency. Okay, when we need to embrace that as a people. We do. We yeah. Do. Hopefully with your message here today, more of us yeah. would be looking into this and seeing how we can fit it in how we can fit it in our lives. Yeah. If it uh, is the right path. And make sure you get your children involved in. Oh of course. Right. Of course. Good. Of course. Right. Thank you. This has been another exciting episode of Talking to Vet. And join me next Friday for another interesting episode where we will be delving into the Tibet Transformation Project and the four secondary schools that have been transformed into fully institutionalized Tibet schools. Thank you and see you next week.